Alright, good morning guys. Let's get started. I will be reviewing chapter 11. We'll be talking about uh, the inverse of A times B. A backslash B. Uh, another way of writing A inverse times B. And REF of matrix A comma B. And we'll be solving this system of linear equations right here. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that all of our x's, all of our y's, and all of our z's are lined up. We'll go and assign that to a. We're going to say that two, negative three, and two. It's going to be our first line. Negative three and two is our second. Let's throw a zero in there because we need a placeholder for it. And then lastly, we have 2, negative 1, and then we throw z to uh, the left side. We have a positive 1. And so you see each line is representative of each equation. However, we're missing our what we've set them equal to. And so here we're going to say 3, 0, and uh, negative 2. We want to put a semicolon because it's one long column. And now we can say inverse of a times b, which is going to be the same thing as saying a backslash b, which is the same thing as saying a to the negative 1 times b, which is almost the same thing as saying first row echelon form of a comma b, except we have to extract the last the last column so that was just reviewed from chapter 11 let's solve this same setup with a uh, chapter 12 using symbolics so the way that I like to do is I say sims x y and z and then I write my equations equation 1 2 times x uh, minus 3 times y plus 2z. Then I have equation 2, which is equal to 3x plus 2y. Then equation 3, which is 2x minus y plus 2 plus z. I'm not going to remember that. 2 times x minus y plus 2 plus c. And now I could just say solve for eq1, eq2, and eq3. And we get a struct. Uh, I want to bypass the struct. You guys don't need to know what a struct is. I could say x, y, and z. Is equal to. So, <clears throat> I just paused. It. I'm sorry. I don't know where I'm at. Um, add put an equal sign to avoid the struct because I'm not going to talk about a struct. But you see that my values are wrong, and I'm I'm glad this happened. It's a good thing. So I get to come up here and show you where I messed up. Could have been right here on EQ1. See if that works. Nope. It could have been 3x plus 2y. 2x minus y plus 2 plus z. You know, I, I, oh, minus 3 right here. Yeah, okay. That's, that's exactly what happened. Oh my gosh. Why? Why are you doing this to me? It's not empty. I'm tempted just to restart this video. 
for some reason I feel like I could salvage it. Okay, then, so... Appearance is empty. Alright, I'm definitely restarting this. No, I want to see what happens since x, y, z. Equation 1 is equal to 2 times x minus 3 times y plus 2 times z minus 3. Equation 2 is equal to negative 3 times x plus 2 times y. Equation 3 is equal to 2 times x minus 1 plus 2 plus c. I say x, y, and z is equal to solve EQ1, EQ2, EQ3. There we go. Alright, hold on. I'm only six minutes into it. I don't want to restart it. Guys, I know somebody out there knows where I went wrong. I don't know where I went wrong. And I will probably watch this video again and see how I messed up really bad. But, let's keep on going. Everybody messes up. I don't feel bad. I'm also shameless. Um, it's important to note that we can make all of these a double. So over here you see this is symbolic. This is sign for symbolic. We switch it. Now it's back into a double. We use the same thing for y and z. We can display them the same way. If I want to say display x. I can do the same thing with y, even though y is in symbolic. There's no difference. Um, let's talk about subs. And I am just going to wing it. Well, I shouldn't do that, but... No, no I'm just going to wing it. God, that is brutal. Who does that? Not Mark Rana. Let's wing it. X, Y... We could create some equation. Oh, let me clear everything. So let me say x, y. Now I can say equation 1 is equal to 2 times x plus y plus 4. For no reason. I can say subs. And here's the format to it. Subs. The equation. The variable. And then whatever you want to sub into it. Usually it's a number. Sometimes it could be another variable though. If that's what you want to do. So for us, we're going to say, let me just use this format. The equation that I said is equation one. The variable that I want to sub into is going to be sub in for x. And the number that I want it to be is six. I don't know. Then I can say solve a and s, and it shows me that y is equal to 16. It's a perfect example of a substitution. If you notice the difference between mine and Peralta's, is that Peralta has single quotes over all of his. Um, I avoid that just by initializing my symbolic variables. And I prefer to do it that way. I feel like it looks cleaner. And um, I also feel like, hey, I, I know which values are going to be symbolic. But you guys could do whatever you like. What's the time? I'm in it for almost 10 minutes. Here is MuPad. Now that's something that, uh, control C, control V. Here is a book. For you guys, if you, anybody wants to read it, I have not read it, so I can't recommend this book, but I did find it online completely free. 
It's like 500 and some pages, and it just reviews MuPad for you. And that's something that our book referenced, but it didn't go into detail about what MuPad was. Um, so if you guys would like to do that, you can. That's an option for you. This is it right here. Symbolic Math Toolbox MuPad Tutorial. It's 523 pages of pure fun and excitement. I recommend you guys do that. And it's free. Free book. And I've said this many times before. You could find any book out there that you ever need for free. You don't have to pay for it um, unless you really want to. In which case, more power to you. You know, support those authors. I support the authors. Me too. I pay for things too. So pause it if you need if you need it. Um, let's go into our final example because I am just flying through this. It's a polyfit and polyval. I don't know why it took so long for me to say that. I don't have my book in front of me. Actually, I do have my book right here. I'm not going to find the page. I'm just going to tell you what it means and you guys will do your best. So let me copy and paste this. Control C. I should pause the video so you guys don't have to see this. But I didn't. Let's plot x comma y. And let's throw that plot over. So well Nope, that's not what I want. I want to make this one tall, and I want to put that one on bottom. That way I can still see what I'm doing. So here is our graph, and what Peralta did initially was he created a straight line. That's what he did here. Polyfit. What polyfit does is it creates an equation for us that best suits our line. So we say 1 is equal to polyfit um, x comma y and we're going to have it to the first order. The reason it's called poly is because it creates polynomials. So here this is just mx plus b where B is going to be your vertical shift. Here we are shifting down. And let's plot it. The way that we plot it is we use polyval. And all polyval does is it substitutes our original x values into our new equation that polyfit gave us. So let's say, because uh, this, this is an equation, guys. This is a 4.8416x minus 0.8745. It's, it's an equation. It doesn't doesn't look like an equation to us, but it is. It's, it's an equation, I promise. And if anybody knows, that's the equation of a, a straight line. So we could rename this. What am I doing? It's not y1, it's y2. Oh, I see why it has one. Y1. First order. Now I can say hold on. And plot x comma y1. And it's a straight line. Well, we see that that straight line looks god awful. Horrible. That's that doesn't fit. It's not a correct fit. So let's call a second figure. We'll call figure two. And we'll say plot x comma y, and we'll say hold on, and then we'll come back up here and we'll fix it, and we'll just call this to the what to the ninth. That's what his notes say. I don't know what I'm doing. Why nine? We go to polyfit nine, which creates an equation for us, correct? An equation for us that we read and we see this these in, invisible x's. So this is a polynomial 
means to the ninth order, which means that this has an invisible x to the nine behind it, and this has an invisible x to the eight, and this has an invisible x to the seven, x to the six, and to the fifth, fourth, third, second, first, and then that's our vertical shift again. So let's plot this and see how it uh, how it works. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I just did polyfit. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm not here. sorry, sorry guys. And I'll just reassign it to y nine. Why not? Why not? Plot x comma y nine. You'll see that 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 better suits us. What am I doing? Let's share. Okay. So this was uh, the first one that we did. That was a straight line. Second one that we did. It looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's just see what happens if I say polyfit to the thirtieth. I don't know. Uh, let's call it too too much writing for me. Polyval at t. So here we say y is thirty. And I could say figure three. I'll say plot x comma y. Hold on. Plot x comma y to the thirtieth. Let's throw that over. Yeah, yep. The bigger isn't always better. That's what we learned from that lesson learned. So that's a that's all I have for you. I've done this video several times, and I know I'm forgetting something. Um, I do not know if I mentioned this at the beginning, but I'll mention it now. Uh, this is the last week of lab. Well. Next week is the last week of lab, but next week you will be doing a final during lab, so that's kind of like finals week. This is your last week of actually, uh, actually learning, I believe. That, that might change. Um, I don't even know what else to tell you guys. It's, uh, it's been great, great semester, and I look forward to something. I don't know. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.